a child was strangled by the parents before they committed suicide. <coughs> they left a note saying that we cannot bear to see the child's pain anymore and hence we are doing it. Many of you have children and grandchildren and for us even to think about a day of the child's pain and suffering is so difficult. And I still find it hard to think of that father still holding on to the child's, the rope around the child's neck and not allowing it to relax. That must have been really hard. Very, very unfortunately, this is not such a rare event. In 2013, more than 26,000 people in India committed suicide for health-related reasons. The exact reasons are not known, but it is not difficult to imagine that most of them are related to disease-related related suffering. Just uh, three years back, when we started a new children's palliative care service, in the largest government hospital, children's, government children's hospital in our city, the first patient that we happened to see was a child who had post-encephalitic uh, spasms. <coughs> I have been in palliative care for 22 years. My colleagues and I have seen a lot of suffering. But this one I found very difficult to take. According to the parents who were uh, there, not in spirit but in body, they seemed to be totally dazed. The child had been like that for three months. They said the child never slept for more than 15 minutes at a time. Then another spasm would wake the child up. The main care appeared to be that little girl, the child's 10-year-old uh, elder sister, who was now acting almost as the mother interacting with us. Now that girl had lost her childhood. She had lost her school. She was now just looking after the sister. <clears throat> that day, one of our experienced volunteers, an experienced medical social worker, had come with us. They confided to me later that after seeing the child's suffering, they had made a mental resort never to go back to the children's clinic. It was so hard on them. But I also imagine that over the long term, unalleviated suffering has another impact on professionals, particularly on doctors. Yet from the days of being medical students and possibly nursing students, people learn to build a brick wall around them to protect them. And gradually become more and more insensitive to this subject. And that, I strongly believe, comes out of helplessness. Very unfortunately, that also makes us give very inappropriate care, even to that child, when that child is dying. We neglect that suffering, allow that suffering, but during the last three days, we still take that child to a intensive care unit and ventilate it, providing the ultimate cruelty and the ultimate insult. I'm sorry, I've been talking about very grim things. There is a bright side. Just a few cents worth of morphine. And the child lived the rest of its life, a reasonably decent life, and eventually died I am glad to report a reasonably good death with dignity. The family, the child, the girl, elder girl must have several scars in her mind, but she is going to school. The family is getting on with life. That was possible, but it happens to uh, maybe two or three thousand among the six million children who need care in our country. Paradoxically, if you look at the top panel, since the introduction of the World Health Organization's ladder in 1986, 
the consumption of opioids for pain relief has gone steeply up globally. It's easy to say globally. What it really means it went up in about 20 countries. And if you look at the bottom panel, during the same time, our consumption of morphine in India came down by 97% to just 3% of what it was. The culprit was our Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act, which was created in 1985, possibly as a response to America's war on drugs. Everybody is afraid of addiction. When we have fear, we are not rational anymore. We built very complicated regulations. I took three years just to find out how to get into the mix. And after another year, I was back where I started. Well, it took 20, it took 19 years. But eventually, eventually, last year, we got the law amended. It takes time in India and in developing countries as a whole. Things change slowly. But eventually, a, an amendment was made so that hospitals and palliative care centers can get access to opioids fairly easily. The process is still going on. Some officials from our Ministry of Health are here. I'm so glad to uh, report that Following the attendance of uh, our Secretary of Health in 2012 in this palace, a national program for palliative care was created. It's not a complete success. The budget allocation was slashed. But it is there. I mean, a policy is there. Now, that needs to be implemented. The Narcotic Drugs Act has been simplified that needs to be implemented. And though agreed in principles, pain management and palliative care are still not to taught to medical and nursing students. That still needs to be done. And we know that in most developing countries, creation of a policy does not easily get translated to action. Implementation, gap is usually very <coughs> Very often it is left to us, the non-government organizations, to catalyze this implementation. But because the law has been amended, has pain management improved? Not yet, we fear. Because that alone does not achieve it. The law may have changed, but children need formulations that are suited to them. If that's not there, there are ways of improvising, but doctors are afraid, nurses are afraid. So that gap is still very much there. And specifically, education is the big problem. Two generations of doctors have not seen what morphine looks like. And all of a sudden, expecting them to do it is unrealistic. And till we have educated professionals, and particularly reached medical and nursing students, They'll continue to be afraid it's going to be a long struggle. I strongly believe that our educational programs must have, I mean, we already have in our six weeks courses a component of uh, palliative care management for palliative care for children. But the doctors who have gone through just a six weeks course are still afraid to use it on children. They may use it on adults. That empowerment has to improve. And certainly, in the whole country, there are only four specialized palliative care centers for children. Certainly, for a country which has one sixth of the world's population, you can imagine how much need is there. And it is not just the professional. How would the public awareness? It's paradoxical. Very often, it's the parents who stand in the way of uh, pain because they are afraid. He can take it, doctor, don't worry about the pain, cure it, is what the parents will say. So certainly, the fear of addiction over among the public and importance of pain relief has to reach the public also, 
not just the professional education. But if we achieve that, now that there is this global activity, I think we can really give the right to life and dignity to children. They today have no voice. They don't vote. They cannot make their suffering heard. And because of that, we, are, we love children. We are very cruel. But once the public recognizes what cruelty is being inflicted on our children, because they have no voice, I'm sure things will change. And that child is maybe among the 2,000 or 3,000 lucky children who can still smile even when they, the child has a Thank you very much.